Here we go. Well, no, no intro music today because I'm traveling and I, I don't have my, my music and all my audio with me. So sorry about that. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Special Friday here from Austin, Texas. I am in the heart of downtown Austin on the 15th floor of my hotel. I'm getting an early start on the Crash Course. And we're going to be doing a little field day stuff that I'll, I'll talk about here in a little bit. Um, it's a very interesting weekend. I came out for a, a very specific purpose. But yeah, early stream, early stream. It says there's an echo, so let's see. Do I have audio playing somewhere? You might want to refresh. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, we're out here for um, vacation with the family, but also I am going to be doing something with a YouTube channel that I will mention in a little bit. So I'm just waiting for everybody to... To slide on into home, I am traveling this weekend, so I appreciate you all being uh, nice in uh, coming in a little bit early on the live stream. Thank you again for for watching and all that good stuff. So we'll get we'll get started here pretty soon. Good, good, good. No echo. Good. All right, people are sliding in. Sue, so, how's it going, everybody? Uh, we'll do Collins in a little bit. Um, yeah, so welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course again. My name is Josh KI6NAZ. I am streaming from my hotel room, so it's a bit different than it normally is. I appreciate that. And um, yeah, so what do we do here? Well, the Ham Radio Crash Course, I built it to, and this is about all of us, really. It's a community. I'm the, I guess you could say the YouTube face of it, but that really doesn't mean just me. There's other people involved in that, and I appreciate all the help from everybody. Uh, but we're trying to push for inclusivity, not exclusivity in ham radio to bring people into the hobby, but not just bring them into the hobby, help them find new and interesting things within that space. And that's what the Friday show is all about. It's about introducing things and talking about things that you may not know about necessarily in ham radio. And that's the point of it. Uh, bring you something new, something to think about, put in your little noggin, and then you can go try it out on your own time and experience something new within ham radio because ham radio is so diverse and so there's so much complexity to it that no real one person can be an expert across the board. I myself included am not an expert in any way, but I stumble through it much like you do, and I appreciate you all riding along with me. I'm saying y'all a lot because I'm in Texas again. Austin, Texas is an interesting city, I gotta say. Um, but anyway, that's the that's the the hard open. Thanks again, everybody, for coming on out. And yeah, the homework for this weekend is like we, we like to kick things off with a little bit of a homework. Go to field day. Uh, go find a field day in your area and go check out what they've got going on. We'll talk about that shortly as we move into the news segment. And why don't we just do that right now? So the news is not the Yesu, but we will be talking about that. First item, the contest is still going for the Anytone AT8D878UV Plus Bluetooth. That's a mouthful. Uh, it's going on through the end of July, or I'm sorry, the beginning of July, and the link is in the description. You only have to give a little bit of information, and you can be on the contest, which we will give away on the first Friday of July, which will be Patrons Picks. Patrons Picks is where I allow the patrons to pick the topic that we're going to talk about. In fact, the poll for that will likely be going up sometime next week or this weekend if I can get enough time while I'm on vacation. Uh, if you want to be interested in that, just click on the cards or down below to Patreon. It'll take you to my Patreon. And if you're interested in the BridgeCom giveaway, take the link to BridgeCom. Pretty simple. So, field day. Back to the homework. Um, the ARRL, if you type in ARRL field day, you'll get a link to the field day 2019 website and on that website you can um, bring up basically all the field day locations around you in this case I'm in Austin so we'll do a quick little search for that and here we go nope let me hold control while I zoom that's not what I want to do Did I just zoom the whole website well that's great there we go uh, so while I'm over that window there we go got it all right there we go. <laughs> UI problems. So you can see there's a number of 
field day locations in and around Austin. There are field day locations basically all around you. Let's back this up, uh, go real wide. Man, enhance, enhance. Let's see, will it show all the little buttons? Anyway, if you go to the AWRL field day, you will be able to get a list of all the cool field day that are gonna be in your area. So make sure to check that out. And so I was gonna mention, why am I in Austin? Well, uh, I wanted to do uh, something with a YouTube channel. This is not a ham radio related YouTube channel, but we're going to do a series of videos on the introduction to ham radio and some other fun things. Maybe you've heard of them, the Modern Rogue. Um, I'm actually out here to meet up with those guys, and I'm going to meet up with them tomorrow. So you'll be seeing some more from them in the future, which I am super super excited about i really appreciate them letting me come out and uh, do a thing with them which is going to be a lot of fun and it worked out because i was in austin anyway for vacation with my family so uh we will be doing a live after chat zach is posting the links oh zach already posted the link to the awrl field day so that's perfect thank you zach uh, we will be doing a discord after chat which is where i talk to all of you and we can go through have a little beer maybe and talk shop and some other fun things so look forward to that so what are we doing today well, um, I got asked. Oh, we got somebody in Turkey. That's very good. Just got my H A R E C license. Uh, nice video for me to be able to make a good first choice. Great. So perfect. That's that's kind of why we're doing this. Uh, I got asked not too long ago. Hey, Josh, uh, what do you think about talking about one brand of radios and kind of just going through the lineup? And I thought, well, that's a fantastic idea. Um, so without further ado, that's what we're going to do today. We picked Yesu. I picked Yesu mainly because I feel that their HT showing is very, very strong. They do a myriad of radios. Actually, Yesu has a very interesting lineup of radios across the board, but their HTs in particular have always been very interesting to me. I find them a fascinating company as far as HTs go, and, and we're going to talk about that a bit. Just looking at their current lineup, they have a pretty diverse collection, so I think that is a perfect, uh, perfect group to start with. So anyway, yes, we will be starting with Yesu. And I am going to be starting with a... Convict Hill Oatmeal Stout. This is a Austin, Texas brewed beer. I wanted to make sure I had an Austin, Texas brewed beer for the chat. And yes, this church key provided by our hotel room that we're staying at. I can talk about things a little bit after when we get to the Discord after chat, but um, I brought my KX2 and so many other radios. And I set up out on the balcony, which there is a very tiny balcony, and I just threw a wire over the end with my KX2. And I was able to tune up. There was lots of activity, but uh, so many talking, and I really wasn't able to get out because of the, uh, the QRP nature. But tomorrow, I assume it's going to be great. Anyway, oatmeal stout. Ooh, there is very good. Um... So how's this going to work? Um, I am going to basically use a lot of the con uh, the data that is on the Yesu website, and I will be bolstering it with other bullets and points from other websites as needed, because as we'll find out, Yesu's website is interesting. The um, ad copy that they use from one radio to another radio isn't the same. Sometimes they'll use bulleted lists. Sometimes they'll use... Uh, flowery words and paragraphs to describe the radio in detail and it makes it a bit um, sporadic in how you break down what the radio does so hopefully I'm going to cut through that a little bit and we'll be able to to proceed that way I'm generally going to use prices that I field from the HRO uh, because I feel that those are generally the right prices as well um, if you compare it to like gigaparts and other companies and stuff like that so, yeah. And I will tell you if I have had extensive hands-on time with the radio or not, or if I'm using really what I'm seeing in bullets and other um, online reviews and whatnot. I have a couple of blogs pulled up that I'll be flipping to through this discussion that I feel do a really good job of talking through some of the points 
So without further ado, what is the first one? What is the first one? Euler. There it is. So I'm going to start with the lower priced ones and the, um, let's call them entry level radios first, and we're going to work our way up. And I've got a special thing at the end where I talk about some quirky things uh, that Yesu offers or has offered in the past that maybe you should be looking for. So the FT4XR is a dual band FM handheld transceiver. Go into an HRO or go into a ham radio store, and they're probably going to have these. They are um, pretty simple as far as functionality is concerned. It's, it's dual band, which is nice. Gives you 2 meter and 70 centimeter. Gives you the ability to monitor FM radio. It has an FM receiver. They're small, lightweight, um, pretty rugged, and they have some um, water-resistant nature to them. They are IPv4, I believe, is their rating. So they can take a bit of a splash and, and they shouldn't have a problem. The speaker, we're going to mention speakers a lot because it's going to become a, an interesting point. It's about a one watt output speaker and it comes with a 1750 milliamp hour lithium ion battery, which they say is capable of 15 hours of operation, which is pretty good. And it includes a two point, uh, sorry, 3.5 hour rapid charger. Pretty good deal. $80, though, for a dual-band radio. Now, it's going to come up later. I'll mention it right up front. The FT4s and the FT65s and some of the other ones have been compared as basically Baofeng um, clones. Now, I will flip this over because it deserves being said. Let me go over to this guy, back over to the website. There was a blog done by QRP Blog on the FT4X. Let's call it the FT4XR. There's a couple of different models, actually, so your mileage will vary. We'll talk about that a bit more. But the um, FT4X is going to be the dual band model. And it says it is, after all, a Baofeng. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut to the point here. Some really good pictures, too, by the way. So check him out, qrpblog.com. Um, there's your gasketing for the waterproof nature. There's a little bit of splashed up radio. Uh, no AC power adapter or power connection here. So keep that in mind. It's only uh, cradle connected, much like the Baofengs are. So again, pulling from Baofeng. It's also a uh, male SMA connection, which is very Baofeng. But there's a tear down here, and I think it deserves a look at. And again, this is from qrpblog.com. I want to make sure I give them a, a shout out because they did a really good job. Now, basically, what it comes down to is, yeah, it's, it's very similar to a Baofeng. So for about $80, you're getting a Baofeng. With that said, the front-end filtering of this radio is far superior than that of any Baofeng. So you're getting, you know, a, an upgraded radio, I'd say, for your money, which is a very good thing. The pros and cons of the FT4XR is pro decent battery, pro good speaker. You're going to find one watt speakers are pretty much going to be consistent throughout the um, <laughs> reading the chat. Chat's cracking me up. Um, one watt is pretty much going to be the standard. Some are going to dip below that, and one watt is pretty much where you want to be and recommended. It has weather receive and FM broadcast receive. Most radios in the price point at this area can receive weather and can do FM. It's pretty much going to be standard. The price, this is the one of the cheaper radios that Yesu has on the market that is dual band, so keep that in mind. The pro for me is the Tactical PTT layout, which again is the little trigger on the right-hand side for the PTT. Uh, Yesu is moving towards this design. The FT3, for example, is carrying it over, which we'll talk about. The FT70 is carrying this over, which again we'll talk about. That's kind of the way they're going. And John Crook said that that is how um, how they are designing radios so that they can op you can operate them with gloves on, which I think is smart. I like it too. It feels really good in the hand. So con question with a question mark is its feature sparks, but it matches the price. You're paying exactly for the hardware you're getting. You're paying exactly for what you're receiving, which is good. The Con, similar hardware to a Baofeng. At the end of the day, uh, this is very similar design to a Baofeng. It has 
Much better front end receive though, which is exactly what you want with this type of radio. Um, if you were to take this to the ARRL like they did at Dayton Hamvention, hooked it up their machine, it would most likely pass. I, I can't imagine a Japanese radio wouldn't pass of today's standards to the ARRL's filter checking that they do. It has a difficult menu. One of the downsides for the FT4, and that's including the X and the V model, is they have pretty difficult metals to navigate. And I think a big con, no external DC jack. I think that is a big problem for most radios, by the way. The FT4VR is the 2 meter only brother of the XR. To me, it's not an option. I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, that's $60, and its brother is $80. So $20 more, you get an extra band. I would go with that. So buy the 4XR instead. The FT65R, which I think Yesu is trying to tout this as maybe a replacement to the FT60. I'm not positive. This is a bigger version of the FT4XR, and you get the same features basically, except it has a bit larger battery, but I don't think it claims a longer operation. It has a better screen, so it's both bigger and it has a similar size screen. I know I said it's bigger, but I think really what it is, it's, it's better looking. It's just a much better looking screen. So I think this is a better way to go, better screen, a little bit bigger, a little bit better. These ones I both played with in the HRO, and I found the buttons on these ones, the face panel, faceplate buttons, to be much, much better. So I would recommend uh, this one gets a little bit of a nod. So the pro on the FT60R, 65R is it has a better screen than its FT4 cousins, a better battery than the FT4 cousins, a good speaker, it's the same speaker as the FT4, weather and FM receive, same, so no big difference between the FT4 and FT65. The price is still good for Yesu as far as an entry-level radio, but it's more expensive than the 4XR. Got that cool tactical PTT. Con is its features sparse, just like the 4X is. That's not really that much of a con unless you are looking to get more out of your radio. This one doesn't have it. It's a fairly simple dual band analog radio. It has a difficult menu system, kind of like a Baofeng, and the con is that it's larger than the FT4 Cousins. For some people, a little bit bigger is not that much of a con. You get better buttons, a um, little bit more stout sometimes. No external jack. It's the same as the FT4, which I don't like. Okay, the FT25 is the 2 meter only mono version of the FT65. I see no reason for this. It is, unless you have a specific reason, like I said before, to have a 2 meter only radio, I would just skip this personally. Okay, the FT270D. I'll hit this one again. 144.95 for a 2 meter only 5 watt radio that the look of it, it has a very similar screen to the FT60, which we're going to talk about here in the next couple of slides. The big difference is, is that this is IPX7 submersible. For 30 minutes, you can let this thing sit at the depth of about three feet and it'll be fine. So I'm guessing that this is more of a form specific role that Yesu has cooked up and I think I think this one has that specific role. So if you're not interested in that, if that's not something you need, then maybe this one you can you can leave on the on the table. Pros, it's submersible, cons, VHF only, and a pretty small NICAD uh, battery, all things considered. I would recommend the FT the FT60R instead over that one. So this was my first ham radio. In fact there's a, a video out there somewhere going back years of me talking about this radio and why I like it. It still goes for $160 if you can find it in the stores, which I have a feeling they're gonna start um, pulling this one back a bit. So this is a dual band, you know, two meter, 70 centimeter radio, five watt output. Again, these are all pretty much gonna be five watt output. It has a pretty wide banded receive for VHF, UHF, can't do cellular. It does airband, it does weather channels, it one touch NOAA, it's actually you click a button, it takes you to NOAA. It has a similar N1M, uh, NIMH battery pack as the, as the previous one, the 270. I've found that it is 
The battery pack is good. It is okay. One of the advantages that the FT60 has uh, that you got to pay for, the accessory pack that has the AA cell tray, you can actually get a full 5 watts out of the, the, the tray, but you got to put six of them in there. So the tray is pretty big. That's pretty effective. That's pretty good for like an MCOMS person or someone that charges double A's and keeps them with them. Um, you can get pretty decent power output out of it with using the double A cells, which I think is great. And it has a thousand memory slots, which my first ham radio, a thousand memory slots was really, really great because I could just load that thing up and I could scan all over and I had a really good time with it. The pros. Great speaker. I don't know if it mentioned, it didn't even mention it, but I have a feeling that that is over a one watt speaker, but it doesn't matter. The audio quality is really, really good. This is probably a better pro. It should have been at the top of the list. Um, the quality of the front end on the receiver is very strong. If you needed a radio to kind of sit and just always be monitoring while other stuff is going on and you may be also transmitting at the same time, the FT60 is a glorious radio for that. It's what they call a really good duplexer and it, it is, it's, it's very, very nice. One of my uh, favorite front ends on an HT is the FT60. So highly, highly recommended for that. Now, programming is a bit of an old school style of programming. There's uh, cloning cables that you have to use to connect it up. Uh, it's easy to clone two radios. So if you find another person, you can just clone them together. It's pretty easy. Programming can be a little bit iffy, but a lot of the ACs are going to have this problem. Con is its battery system is, is dated. Lithium ion is the way everything's going. It's not dual watch, so you can't have two channels simultaneously. And it's just an older design. It's, it's been around for a really long time. But um, yeah, Paul, uh, Paul uh, Abushan in the chat is saying a good portable aviation band, the FT60, the one I'm talking about. Great portable for, um, for air band. Works great. Okay, so the FT70, even though it's cheaper and coming after the FT60, the FT70 is kind of like the spiritual successor to the FT60 in my mind. This is the first radio we've talked about so far that is going to be C4FM, capable of doing wires, Yacy system fusion. It's still dual band, it's still five watts, uh, has that tactical PTT. So this is your entry point into doing digital in the Yesu lineup for $150, which is not bad at all. Um, this is where you, you gotta, mend, I gotta point it out though. The speaker is 750, or seven, ah, sorry, 700 milliwatts, right? Which is less than the 270, and much less than the first guys, the FT4s and the FT6s. So this is where we're, we're kind of seeing a trend with, with Yesu as they're making newer radios. They're, they're kind of putting smaller, less powered speakers in them. Uh, we'll talk about it in a little bit. The speaker is totally functional on the 70, although I do mention that because it is, it's kind of important. Now, this is also the first radio in the lineup that has, at the price point range, has the automatic mode select, which I think is uh, really, really cool. So when you get all your channels loaded on the radio and you set the mode of operation that you want the, the radio to be receiving in, it could be digital, it could be FM, it could be whatever, and you start scanning, if you pick up an analog station, it'll flip over to FM. If you pick up a digital station that is a digital that it can decode, C4 FM, uh, then it'll switch over to that. Yacy System Fusion specifically, it'll switch over to that. So you can just kind of run through your entire list of frequencies and you can switch back and forth, which is really, really nice. And then it also has GM Group Monitor, which is a little bit more specific for the MCOM guys, but you can take a group of these radios, a group of these and the FT2s and the FT3 once it comes out, and you can put them on the same frequency and they can all be within tweeting to each other basically. And you can see exactly where they're at using the um, digital modes that it's using. So it's very helpful for the MCOM community. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty good radio. So a little bit more data continued. It's dual band FM, C4 FM output, uh, fusion, five watt output. It has a wide band receive, an external DC jack, the automatic, the AMS mode, the automatic mode select, and pretty good scanning. So the pros and cons. You get a lot of radio for the price. It's cheaper than an FT60, so it's kind of like, why not just go to that? I would, I would agree. 
It's easy to program by hand. This is the probably the easiest radio I've ever programmed by hand. And I have a video on that that I did with Billy Bob at the HRO. It has an external DC jack, so big thumbs up for that. It is Yaesu System Fusion capable, so if you had a zoom spot, um, if you wanted to work in other digital modes using a zoom spot, this would be a good starting radio to get to if you didn't want to go the DMR route. Pro, better speaker than an FT2DR. I did a comparison for that as well with Billy Bob. Um, yeah, but it's still not that that one mil, uh, that one watt driven speaker like on the other radio. So I'll give it a, a pro, maybe just a in the middle. Con, convoluted computer programming setup. Kind of weird on how you have to program this thing if you want to go that route. And big con, the last one, the battery life. The battery life is not great on this radio. I I don't know what's doing it, uh, but it is not that great. And and there's a lot of people that are talking in the chat right now too. Not a very good battery life. So I don't know what to say on that one. I hope things change. Now, moving along, the VX6R is still on sale. It's a bit of an older radio. That screen is basically the same screen that's in the FT60. So it's 239.95. This is where we take a big jump up. We just basically hundred dollars basically that we just leapt up from where we were just talking to where we're now. This radio is not digital though. This is a relatively older radio. I'm pulling the Yesu ad copy on this because it's not bulleted like we'll see on some of the other ones. Yesu says it is an ultra rugged 140, 144 to 430 megahertz FM handheld. They should have been more specific because it's important, and we'll hit that on the next slide. It is JIS-7 submersible, that has JIS-7 submersibility, which is similar to the 270 we talked about earlier. It has the emergency automatic identification system, which nobody really uses. There may be some people that use it, but I've never encountered it. There may be people who use it for MCOMs. And it's a, it's a, on the surface, reading what Yesu put out, I was like, well, this is a fairly no frills radio. Why is it so expensive? Because the ad copy is written kind of a little just bland. It comes with a 1400 milliamp lithium, lithium ion battery pack, which is pretty low. Remember, this is an older radio. These are like the first type of battery packs coming out. But Yesu left a lot out of their ad copy. So I picked up ad copy from Universal Radio. It turns out that this is a Wideband receiver, it is uh, tri-band, so it has way more functionality than, than Yesu was even talking about, and it has a CW trainer built into it. So, very quirky radio. The VX6R is actually a pretty good radio. It's still being sold, it is more expensive, but you have fairly wide use for this radio, which is pretty, pretty good. So, it, it's on a list for some people, Maybe the, the diehard analog person who wants tri-band capability um, with a lithium-ion battery. Pretty good. So the pros and cons of the VX6R. Tri-band, pro. It wasn't even mentioned in the Yesu copy. You got to go look up other stuff if you wanted to know that. Uh, pro lithium ion battery, but it's smaller than the cheaper radios that we already talked about. It has a wideband VHF UHF receive, which is nice. It's neither a pro nor a con, but it's analog only. You kind of have to know that going in. And con, it's still priced really high. All right, so the FT2DR, possibly one of my favorite handy talkies on the market, not just a Yesu radio. C4FM. Dual band, 2 meter, 70 centimeter, digital handheld with a touch screen. Now, again, this is one of those ad copies where Yesu kind of just threw out a, a paragraph and then hit you with a bunch of other stuff later. So the, the key takeaways of this radio are it's digital, embedded GPS, it does Yesu System Fusion and wires, um, touch screen, which is a little bit rare in the HT market, really good battery life.
a little bit more details to this. It's $299.95 right now, and that's with a coupon. Yesu has this discounted. So pretty good price because they're rolling out the FT3. They say that's not why they've lowered the price, but that's kind of where we're at. What's cool about this radio is it has two independent receivers. Most of the radios we've talked about so far don't have that capability. What that allows you to do is you can have any split type of receive on either one of those receivers. If you want to be monitoring VHF on one and UHF on the other, you can do that. UHF, UHF, you can do that. VHF, VHF, you can do that. <laughs> I'm taking this from Yesu's uh, website. They say loud, vibrant audio. It is an even smaller speaker than the FT70. The speaker on this radio, which I have right here, is its major con. And I have covered that in the review on the FT2DR when I reviewed it. The advantage, though, another advantage is it is a really wideband receiver. It's, it's an HF wideband receiver. It'll go all the way from 500 kilohertz to 999 megahertz. So it can do shortwave, FM, AM broadcast, analog TV, if there's anybody out there still using it, um, audio aircraft, public service channels, you name it. Um, you, it can do that. It's a very, very capable, highly feature-rich radio. It also includes embedded GPS and a 1,296 B, uh, 9600 BPS APRS data communication. Key note on APRS with this radio, the TNC, which is the terminal, basically, the terminal node system that takes in the packets and brings out the data or brings in the data and sends out the packets, it is a uh, fairly closed system. On other competing radios like the Kenwoods, it's an open TNC. You can plug that directly into the uh, computer and you can access the TNC directly. Not so with the Yesu. The Yesu is fairly closed down. The advantage though, of the Yesu, very, very easy to use APRS system. All right, so the pros and cons. The Yesu FT2DR is really, really, really feature rich. It is digital, so it'll do wires XC4 FM, just like the FT70 does, right? But it has a really wide receive. Basically anything that's out there that you wanna to listen to, you can hear. Um, you have to put the right antenna in some cases on it if you wanna do that, but it's capable and I use it a lot. It has, I go into a lot of detail on the FT2DR in my review, so if you wanna check that out, just search FT2DR review and, and most likely mine will come up or search for Hashinasi, it'll come up. Um, I really think that the APRS system, the setup, the interface for this radio is the best, arguably the best on the market. Some people believe the Kenwood's a little bit better, but I don't know. I think it's much easier when you're out in the field to use the APRS on the FT2. The pro, you can give it a pro for the touchscreen. People don't like the touchscreen. I like the touchscreen, so I'm going to give it a pro. Pro, band scope. It has a really, really nice band scope. It's very effective, and you can make it fairly wide enough to get a, a really good chunk of what you're monitoring. Um, I think the feature set matches the price it is right now. I think at $300, that is a fine price for the feature set. I don't think that, I know there's people in the chat right now saying, oh, it's still too expensive. I disagree. I think for $300, you're getting a lot of radio. You're getting analog, digital, GPS enabled, APRS, a very wideband receive, a very good user interface, although it can be complicated, but just because there's so much going on. And so I think it matches. The battery is probably one of the best batteries on a fully featured HT like we're talking about. It is a very good battery last you, run you through the entire day, no problem, and that's using it nonstop, never turning it off, never letting it go, go into a battery save mode. Con, this is the glaring con from me, the speaker is not very good. The speaker is the, the bad part about this radio. It, it's just not, um, it's just not up to par. And, and I cover it in the review to some detail and compare it to the FT70. You're really just talking about this faceplate. There's just, there's just not a lot going on here, right? It is what it is. And that's possibly because it had to fit the screen in it. I don't know. 
Okay, so I got to talk about it. The FT3 DR was introduced during Dayton, or I guess it, it leaked the day before Dayton. Um, the FT3 DR is basically everything the FT2 DR is, but shorter and fatter, and um, the screen got a little bit smaller. The advantage, it has, now it has Bluetooth, and it has a color screen, and what they're calling a CAM system, which is a club channel activity monitor, which takes the GM locator that I talked about that the FT70 has and the FT2 DR has, and it uh, widens it up a little bit to uh, where you can actually see the signal strength of what you're, you're monitoring. Uh, there are a couple different uses for that. One of them is uh, frequencies that you monitor like uh, repeaters in your area or local simplex in your area. You get a really nice uh, bar that, that shows how strong the signal is coming into you. But more needs to be seen on that one. I need to get my hands on it. So, so far it's basically like an FT2 with just some big upgrades. Pro, or this one's pretty simple, everything you like on the FT2 and more. Color screen and Bluetooth. Those were the things people really, uh, somebody already called in. Well, hold on, hold on with the call. We'll, we'll get you in in a second. Um, the color screen's great, Bluetooth, we have to try this out. I need to try all this out. So uh, this is all just speculations. Pro, all the accessories fit. I am ecstatic about all the accessories fitting in, and I assume that it has the same small speaker. It mentions 700 milliwatts, which is uh, what the FT2 DR has. I don't know if physically it's the same part, though, so I don't know if the quality is going to be different. I will have to try this. And then undetermined, by adding Bluetooth and adding a color screen, are you lowering the battery life? All signs point to likely that it will lower the battery life, but I really need to get my hands on one. So right now, those are what I'm tracking. The street price for this is over $500. I have a feeling it will go down, and I have been told that by people that are in the, uh, the retail industry for radio, so we'll see. So that's the current lineup of Yesu radios. That's what they're selling. But I thought it would be a very, very good idea to talk about some of the discontinued radios that you can still find used. And quite frankly, they're all still very good options. So the VX8R is such a cool radio. Discontinued, I was looking on eBay at completed auctions, about $250, and you can find some for less than that. This radio has Bluetooth, but you have to have an optional component. It does... Uh, Spawny sent four hundred and two twenty dollars. Uh, twenty. Sorry, four dollars and twenty cents. Thank you, Spawny. What radio is best for my kayak? Most likely that FT two seventy, right? Because you need something that's submersible. <laughs> so two meter only for you. Um, although this radio, the VX eight R, is um, is submersible. It's great. Uh, the VX eight R. We're going to talk about this with quite some deal. Zach says, go home, you're drunk. I'm not drunk. I have barely had this much beer. I'm sorry, I'm traveling. You guys got to cut me some more slack, seriously. I just wanted Spawny to send me 420. I'm used to saying 420, right? So then you say for Spawny 420, $420, right? Don't do it, Spawny. Don't do it. I'm kidding. Um, so everything on this radio, which we're going to talk about, it does a lot, by the way. And I'm going to go into a couple more slides about this. It's got Bluetooth with an adapter. It is, they call it the next generation handheld. It's now discontinued. But this actually started the ball rolling. The next two radios I'm going to talk about actually started the ball rolling into what we see today with the FT2 and the FT3. And a lot of it is owed towards the VX8R, which, check this out. This radio is quad band. It will do six meters at one watt, two meters, 220 at 1.5 watt and 70 centimeters. So already um, this radio has a ton of capability that they're not even tapping into that market on any of the radios that they have right now. They're not trying to do six meters with it. Now granted, to do six meters with this radio, you had to have a whip that had a kind of large extended nubbin on the end with the coil for the six meter wire. This is an interesting feature. I don't know how much it got used, because one watt on six meters is not great, 
but you know, hey, it's a, it's a cool option. This radio has independent dual band operation, much like we see on the FT2DR, so it was kind of the stepping stone that got us to where we are today. It has GPS, but it's in a, a dongle that you have to connect. It has wideband receive. It has a barometric and temperature sensor built into the radio. Very, very cool. And an independent AM, FM broadcast receiver. So what a cool radio. The pros and cons of this one. Pro is it's like a Swiss Army radio. It has many bands of operation, four of them. It has a wideband receive. It has an independent AM, FM transmitter. And the battery life, as I'm told, is very good. And that was by um, KG6HQD, right? Jerry out here on the YouTubes. Very, very good radio. Now, at the same time, I think he's graduated from this radio to an FT2. Regardless, it's still a good radio. Con, everything on this radio is an add-on or, or a kludge, if you will. The GPS is a dongle. The Bluetooth is a dongle. And six meters requires that whip extension. So it's got a lot of cool, like, cutting-edge features, but they're all kind of just Frankensteined on. And, I mean, you can even see the, the, yeah, the military look of this radio. It's got kind of a military look. That cap actually comes up, and you can stab the GPS thing on top. Or you could use the, uh, it had a, a PTT extend, uh, extensionable mic on it, and you would actually put the GPS on top of that. And people would put that on their shoulder so it could, it could get good access to the sky. Really interesting radio. So I think it was kind of before its time. The good news is Yesu took what they learned from that radio and packed it right into the FT2 and then the FT3. So Corey sent me $10. Your next beer is on me, buddy. Okay, well, I got my next beer right here. It's this one. So, uh, forget your life. Call back in a second. I will answer, but we're not there yet. We're going to finish the slides, and then we'll do Q&A. We're, we're, we're almost there. Uh, we're going to go a little bit long, too. So here we go. Uh, we covered that. Takeaway on this. If you can find a cheap used model of this, buy it. Buy it and use it. It's a good radio. So then you have the FT1D, which is the spiritual, you know, parent or forebearer for the FT2. Dual band, GPS embedded radio, right? So it has C4 FDMA. So this is a digital mode capable radio. Um, C4 FM. So dual receivers, C4 FM integrated gps it does C, uh, ctcss or, or dcs tones for encoding and decoding so you can actually decode the tones coming in which i thought is pretty cool it does weather receiving just like most radios do digital group gsm got it got it got it and a wideband receive so this was kind of again laying down the roots for where the ft2 is now so these two radios kind of together yesu took what they learned and applied it into the ft2 which i think they did a good job the pros and cons embedded gprs so this does aprs much like our previous model did too but this one is embedded no dongles needed it has a decent speaker it has a wideband receive it's lithium ion but the con is the use prices for both these radios is still way, way up. So keep that in mind. Okay. So thank you for bearing with me so far. So which one is the best radio? Which one would I say is the best radio? Of course, I couldn't just pick one. I had to break this down into a couple of different options. So if you are a new ham on a budget, I new ham on a budget, budget being the key word, I'd probably go with the 65 over the 4XR. That is simply because of the screen and those that keypad on the front. Both beat out the 4XR. So appreciate that's my pick on that one. Hey, Dennis is in the house, 86DM. Thanks for coming on in. Best for a new ham, budget not being that important, the FT70. Now, this one is tough because I I I want I want there to be a better option here, to be honest with you. I don't like the battery life on the FT70. I think that's a major problem. And if you saw uh, Two Hands in a Radio, he's the guy who does all the shortwave radio reviews where it's just his two hands and he's just playing around with a, a radio. I don't know if you've heard of him, but he does shorthand videos. He made a couple of videos on the FT70. He actually came to my videos, called me out, said like, why do you like this radio? It has the worst battery ever. Um, yeah, so I can't disagree with him. This radio has problems with its battery. 
you will likely need a backup battery or two for this radio to particularly if you're going to use it in MCOM situations because you're going to need it on you're going to need to be able to use it so if this is a split if you're an FT if you want the FT70 to do digital or you want a radio to do digital you've got to go with the FT70 it's probably the cheapest that Yesu has out right now that it does digital but if you want a ham radio as a beginner, and budget's not that much of a problem, the FT60 is still a great pick. Particularly if you're thinking about doing Aries or Races or getting into MCOMs, the FT60 is a solid radio. You got that AAA battery pack or AA battery pack, you can slap more batteries into it and it will run with decent power. So still good pick on the FT60, I think. I hope they don't get rid of it for a while. Best Full featured radio, price is no issue. It's likely going to be the FT3 because it does everything the FT2 does and more. If for some reason we find out that the battery life takes a complete dive uh, by putting on those new features, then I might say the FT2 DR is a better pick. I, we've got to wait and see. I don't have one in my hands yet. But if FT2 DR, priced as it is right now, I would say it's a number one if your goal is to do APRS out in the field. It, it's, the screen is easy to read in the sun. The battery life is fantastic. You can tune it to get a really long life out of the battery if you're going to be out for a couple of days without a charger. I think the FT2DR is still a solid, solid radio. I know people were bummed when the FT3 got introduced. They're like, oh, I just bought an FT2. I think your money is still good. I think the product is still good. I think the radio is still a good pick. For $300, I know people said it's too expensive, but I think you get exactly what you're paying for as far as features are concerned. So, best full feature radio, the VX85, still a cool radio. I still really like it. I I can't really have that many HTs. You know, I can only really use two um, theoretically at a time. And I like the FT2, so that's what I carry and use. But if you were looking for something, maybe with a little bit more tactical look or a little bit um, got a hipster vibe to it. The VX85 is that. You can do six meters in a handy talkie, which is great. So that's the presentation. Um, I appreciate you guys watching. If you could comment below on what you think, because I'm going to open it up to Collins right now. And yeah. And I will put on my, my kids' headphones. I had to borrow these from my son because I left my let's see if we've got anybody oh yeah we had somebody leave sorry about that yeah so that VX6R is not bad though too I really like that Let's read the comments. Yeah, forget your life. That's a really good point. He says, Yesu puts out HTs like Nintendo puts out handhelds. And, you know, Nintendo's done a lot of really weird stuff, like, uh, you know, the Virtual Boy, uh, the Labo stuff they're producing, the card readers, the Game Boy printer, the Game Boy camera. They, they try and push the envelope, and I think Yesu, at least in the HD department, mm -hmm. is doing that. Oh, we got a caller. Hey, caller, who do we have? Spawny. Hey, it's Spawny, my buddy Spawny. How's it going, buddy? What's up? Not too bad. So what uh, what, what brings you by? Let me see if I got your audio in. Yep, yeah, it seems to sound all right over here. Yep, so what, what uh, any question, comment? I figured, it, I figured I'd call in because I've been watching your show for quite a a while now and it's actually really interesting to me thank you buddy i just wish we could get a little bit more canadian content but yeah what would that mean what would more canadian content look like to you just canadian prices and oh hey, that's not a bad question like that. i'm gonna write that down the, the prices for the american stuff and the canadian mm -hmm. stuff are two total all games you know um i got a I got a comment on uh, from an Australian about the Sayu uh, Cu is what my wife corrects me constantly. That it's way too expensive in Australia to get that radio, and he's just better off buying a Yesu eight fifty seven or eight ninety one or whatever. So 
that's that's good. I should mention prices uh, to a, a larger world market. Yeah, because you're reaching an international market now. I guess so. It's a little weird to think that way, but yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, I could well, eat I could eat poutine on the chat. That's pretty big Canadian, right? That's French Canadian. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, all right. I get pinot. Bacon. You will love that stuff. What's that? Pinot bacon. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I would. I've had it uh, only. A, I've only had it a couple of times. And I guess it de it varies depending on where you get it from too. Yeah, you got to get it from up here. It's oh, I, I that's the Canadian thing, bacon. Yeah. Well, I I I have no problem with bacon. Any bacon is good for me. <laughs> uh, of course. Well, I've taken up enough of your time. I'll let somebody else call in. Hey, I appreciate it. All right, Bonnie, thanks for and the thanks chat. for thanks for Be the safe. support, buddy. No problem. Bye bye. Okay. Okay, next caller. Who do we have? Hey, this is Forget Your Life. Hey, is this Jagger? Is that your name? Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. I've got the... Yeah, hey, hey, uh, the FT-65, man. Yes. Um, it has a secret, it has a secret menu. Oh, okay, we're getting, we're getting got... special. Okay, tell me about it. Remember exactly, but you have to hold the function button down and then two or three other buttons at the same time and then turn it on that style of thing, the three finger salute. And I did this, I did this, and it's great. It uh, instead of showing just one frequency, it uh comes up with band A and band B, um, oh. which is pretty interesting. Uh, and then in, in VFO mode, well, let's start with mode. So in memory mode, you get to you get to see the alphanumerics of the channel, and you also get to see the numbers, the uh, the frequency. Okay. So that's that that's a cool little bonus there. And then in uh, O mode, you get a split. You get an A and a B channel. Oh, okay. And when you work, there's an option in the menu. It actually activates. I'm, I, I'm not BSing you here either. This is crazy. You need to know about this, but. Um, it actually activates more menu options when you do this as well. And uh, it'll work a split mode for doing satellite. So you, you plug in a VHF on the upper channel and a UHF on the yeah. lower channel in VFO mode. Okay. And when you, you listen, and then when you hit the PTT button, it'll switch to the B channel so you can talk. So it does semi-duplex. It can't, you can't uh, it receive like a feature while that, you're transmitting though, right? No. Okay. No. It's not full duplex. But but it does operate split. It seems like, yes. And this is such a neat little option in this radio that nobody seems to talk about. And they're covered in the um, the advanced manual on the ACS web. But it's there. It's not in the, interestingly enough, it's not in the 4X. It's yeah. The, it's a whole different, and the, the, those radios look the exact same, yet the, both menus are completely different. My wife has the 4X, which she chose because it's small. She wanted the absolute smallest radio, and that one's pretty small. So if I could just be a hero of 65, look into it a little bit more, uh, whoever's listening, and because that trick menu is there. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty neat. Um, uh, and uh, the, other, the other point was when you're talking about the 70. Yes. Did you mention the the volume adjustment? No, and and that is a good two point. Hands? Yeah, you got to push the button oh. and then then do the volume. Yeah, see, I I'm a cyclist and I I got friends that do kayaking and stuff, and I it's impossible. We had to get rid of that radio just for that. So that's a major con because you can't just change the volume uh, on one one control. With one, yeah, with one hand, it's really hard. You got to have like two, three thumbs, you know? <laughs> right. Well, you got to bring your, your other but, hand uh, in. That was the, uh, two hands in a radio said the same thing, that he hated having to key, the, key something and then control the volume. He'd rather just be able to turn it and, and get the volume where he wanted. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Well, hey, yeah, well, hey, if you're ever able to pick up one cheap, the 65, visit it, 
look into that secret menu. It, it there's only a couple of like three minute YouTube videos out there, and I think it's a really neat little secret. Well, so, that, I don't know. Very, I know you got enough stuff going on, but yeah, right. That split operation is yeah. like the way we do HF radio, right? We use split in some cases. So we're we're listening on one frequency and we're transmitting on another, right? So that that's an interesting concept. Yeah. I don't know why you would necessarily need that for for a handy talkie, but I'm guessing satellite. That's probably the only thing I can think of. Yeah, that's the that's about the only thing, and it's in such a price range that makes it uh, doable with one radio. Obviously, you could have two radios if you wanted, but right. this is a way to do it in one radio. Then yeah, cool. Anyway, those are my thoughts. I like it. I'll All take right. them. <laughs> accepted your, your thoughts are chat. accepted alright buddy thanks for calling in okay. yep yeah. alright okay so that was Jagger forget your life and Spawny thank you Spawny I didn't ask Spawny how he's doing I know he had some medical stuff going on but I hope he's doing well it sounds like he is he sounded pretty strong on the phone so good for him I'm glad he called in and appreciate the support from both doing that so anybody want to call in i'll take your calls now otherwise we'll wrap it up and then i can wait for this to upload and and try and cut that, <laughs> that beginning part out thank you so much for sticking with me by the way and watching that let me go back through the chat see if i missed anything while you're in oh, oh uh, andy's got some hot tips while you're in austin hit ruby's barbecue great food and does takeaway bring a bunch of field day and for the there you go uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Vegan bacon? I don't know about vegan bacon. I don't know, man. Let's see. Is the FT100 worth buying? Um, I don't know. I, I should probably do a video on that, but I, I want a mobile to be a dual channel, and I don't think the FTM100 or the FT100 is. I could be wrong. We're talking about the same thing, right? I think we are. But the FT100 works really well with the HRI 200 or HRI 100. Man, there's so many numbers and letter acronyms in ham radio. They work well together if you wanted to run a node for doing wires X for doing a wires X room. So, eh, I it, it depends on your situation. It's a much smaller grouping of people that I think it's um that you should you should be interested in that radio. Well, all right. I think that will wrap it up then if we don't have any more calls. I'll leave the calls open and let me do my Patreon call out. For my patrons, reminder, uh, link is in the description for Patreon. The newsletter goes out in the beginning of every month and it's just about my amateur radio musings. And we have different levels for stickers and other cool stuff I send out. And then we have patron picks, which is always the first video of the month, the first Friday stream of the month, the patrons pick which topic it's going to be on at that given level. So that is these folks right here, the producers as we call them. Thank you so much to Chris Ebert, Carrie Blackwell, Jason Brown, Jason Siebert, David Dancero, Danny Miller, Wesley Magyar, Magyar I've got to focus on that one, Franklin Lewis, Brad Snyder, Dennis Dunderdale, Garrett Larson, Jonathan Franson, AD6DM, who was in the chat earlier. Thanks for stopping by. The Wyoming Ham, I saw him earlier too. Oh, Wesley's in here too, excellent. Uh, Dennis Mickelson, George Gaini, Andy, Kenny Miyamoto, Ron Thorson, Ken Hall, Devin B. Hedge, Mark Chase, Raymond Cracker, Geraldo Kelso, KE8HWD Rob, Thomas Strickland, Corey Sheldon, Brad Nadal, Stephen Hunt, Ronald White, and the Brew Crew. So thank you very much. So anyway, thanks everybody. Take a sip there. Um, I am going to probably be posting and recording a lot of stuff for tomorrow, which should be really interesting. I hope everybody's excited about that. I certainly am. And uh, we can talk about that more on Discord, all right? So hopefully you take the link from Zach. Zach, thank you so much for uh, doing the admin stuff here and posting the links. I appreciate it. And all right, guys, I will talk to you later. See ya.